Okay, this is a video tutorial for this stitch, which is affectionately called the wheat stitch by some of us. Um, otherwise, technically, it is some front post double crochets um, and some puff stitches or bobble stitches. Um, you can use either one. I prefer to use puff stitches or popcorns because it makes it look more like a braid. Um, I have two pieces here. This one was worked in the round and this one was worked in rows. If you're going to work in rows, this is going to use a combination of front post and back post double crochets. Um, if you're just going to use, uh, do it in the round, it's going to be just front post. Um, that's really the main three stitches that you need to know to do this. You, it's pretty basic stuff. Um, this is, uh, both of these are um, just regular baby weight yarn. What I'm going to be working with here is Bernat Giggles. Um, I have I have a six millimeter hook and it calls for a five millimeter hook but I'm going to use a six millimeter hook because if you use a larger hook it makes it a little fluffier and you you get the definition and the dimension and the uh, design and it really makes the cables pop more and it's also fluffier and softer and this is for a baby so I want to make sure that it's nice and soft and comfy so I'm going to use the bigger six millimeter hook and for my foundation row I have done 98 stitches um, there you need to do your foundation row in multiples of seven. Um, what's going to happen is that each group of seven is going to end up becoming one of your little wheats or whatever this thing is called on a wheat plant. Um, every seven stitches is going to be another one. So however many of these you want your item to be wide, that's how many you need to make your foundation row. This is for working in rows. This is not going to be a round. Um, I'm going to do that later. I will uh, do that at the end. It's a little easier um, because it does only use front post double crochet um, and you don't have to worry about flipping it and doing it backwards. Um, but for the beginning, we're gonna do the harder one and that's doing it in rows. Um, we're going to start off with our foundation and for the first double crochet you're going to do you know just chain three and then do two more double crochets and then you're going to skip one um, that's going to be sort of the beginning of one of these little designs here and then you're going to do six more after you skipped one. Um, five and six. Okay, and then after you've done six, you're going to skip one again, and you're going to keep doing that all the way to the end every sixth stitch you're going to skip one of your chains on your foundation until you get to the end and then you'll have three left and you're going to do three double crochets in the, in the end just like uh, you did in the beginning and that way you'll have these groups of six all along and then three on each end okay I have finished my second row and I'm going to move on to row three um, when you are starting row three, you're going to be working all um, front post double crochets and chains uh, with one slip stitch that's going to go in each one of the spaces that you've created here. Um, <clears throat> when you do your first one to uh, build up so that you can do your front post double crochets. What I usually do is I go around 
and do a single crochet, I guess a front post single crochet, um, and then chain two. And that is how I do it. But you can do it, uh, I guess, a, a different, it's a messier way. Uh, <laughs> that for lack of a better term um, you would chain two and then do a front post double crochet um, what that does is it leaves this little chain behind um, but then you've got like a bunch of weird little lumps and stuff around the edge so I like to keep it um, a little more simple and uh, a little more streamlined and I just I just kind of, sorry, I dropped one of my little double crochets here. All right, so do a front post single crochet, chain two, and then you're going to do two more front post double crochets. Um, if you don't know how to do a front post double crochet, all you do is go behind it like that and pull your double crochet right up through it. Um, you're just going around the post of the double crochet instead of through any of the loops. Um, and then, once you've got three front post double crochets on here, you're gonna do chain two and then connect it down here with a slip stitch. And then chain two and what that gives you, I'm moving on to the front post double crochets here. I'm going to do three. Um, what this little chain thingy we did here does is it starts your design. This is going to be something that you do at the bottom and the top of each one. It's just chain two, slip stitch, chain two. Um, and that's essentially going to be the beginning of your design. Now continue do that all the way across okay I just finished row three and I'm gonna start row four I haven't turned it around yet um, before I turn it I'm going to go ahead and do a single front post double crochet um, and my two chains I'm just doing that so it, it's a little it's a little easier to remember um, to actually do the post and not just chain up. Um, now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to start my back post double crochets. This side we have to do back post. Um, for back post double crochet, for anyone who doesn't know how to do it, um, it's exactly like front post double crochet except instead of going that way you're going to come in and you're going to go behind the work and come up through here before you pull your yarn through. And then you just do your double crochet. So you go behind, this is the post here, you went behind and you're going to pull through back there. Um, it's exactly the same, it's just you're, you're pulling from the back so that it creates the look of a front post double crochet on the opposite side because this is the front of your work. Um, for the puff stitch, sorry I'm getting all tangled here. For the puff stitch you're going to chain one and you're going to yarn over and then you insert your hook in either one. There's two sides of your slip here. You can do the right side or the left side, it doesn't matter. Um, just insert in one of them and you're going to draw up four times to do your puff stitch. So I've got two, yarn over three, oh, I got a tangle, three, yarn over, and that's four. And then you're going to close it and do a slip stitch and that will complete your puff. Now, the chart says to chain two in between each puff stitch, but I don't do that. Um, it makes it too loose and too open and it looks too lacy and I want it to look really tight, like 
um, a, a true cable, so we're not going to put uh, that space there. And then you're going to insert your hook here and do another puff in the same hole that you did the other one. You're going to draw up four times, yarn over and draw up four times. Close it, slip stitch, and then chain one, and that completes the puff part of this row. And then you're just going to back post double crochet six to get to the next puff. And then chain and do your next set of puff stitches. Okay, we are on to row five now. Um, I already did my front post single crochet in my two chains, so I'm ready to go. And we're just going to switch back to front post double crochet. Um, you're going to just sort of follow the pattern all the way across. Um, you're going to be doing exactly the same thing as you did on the last row, except this time you're going to be doing front post double crochets. And when you get to the puff stitches, remember to chain one, and you're just going to go right between them to do your next set of puff stitches. And that's what makes that braid effect, is that you're going right in there in between them. All right, and that's that row. Um, for the next two rows, you're going to do exactly the same thing as you did for these two rows, you're, after you finish this row of front post double crochet and puffs, you're going to flip it and you're going to do another row of back post double crochet and puff. And then you're going to do one more front post double crochet and puffs. And then that's going to be, you're going to have four sets of puffs on here. And once you have that four sets of puffs, then I am going to come, well, once I have the four sets of puffs, I'm going to come back and show you how to end that row of designs and start another one 